Khan Sennett, who is senior advisor to the Glo a senior advisor to the Global Virus Network, chairman of internal medicine at the University of South Florida, also the uh, he's epi uh, epidemiologist at Tampa General Hospital. Uh, also, crazy stories uh, that are coming in from, of course, all over the country. Uh, a Kentucky coronavirus patient has actually been placed under police guard after refusing to stay quarantined. Uh, Kentucky's governor revealed this story. An unidentified 53-year-old man from Nelson County, he tested positive at the University of Louisville, but he left against medical advice and he refused to self-isolate at home. Uh, a local judge declared a state of emergency just in order to invoke a little-known statute that allows him to force a self-isolation or quarantine. Dr. Senate, that sounds extreme, but then again, if somebody tests positive and refuses to self-quarantine, uh, it, it, it creates a real dilemma for, for a community, right? I, I agree completely with that. Uh, most health departments uh, in, in a time of emergency have actually law enforcement authority uh, since they're not most health department people aren't up to carrying guns and guarding people. They will uh, put on protective gear. They'll usually secure two sheriff's units. They'll go to the person's house and they say, you either stay in the house or you can stay in isolation in jail. Uh, lots of lots of email questions for Dr. Senate. Here is Anne in Washington State, which has been particularly hard hit, certainly in Seattle. Anne writes, uh, Dr. Sennett, can the virus survive on fabric or hard surfaces? Uh, there are many variables in the survival of this virus. Moisture, avoidance of UV light, things of that nature. In general, we think, is, say, if it were on your clothes, you're indoors, away from the sun, it could probably last about 15 to 20 hours. Interesting. 800-655-MIKE. Here's another. A lot of people are asking this one. What about going outside? Is it okay to go ahead and go out in your yard, work, et cetera? Thank you. I, that's a wonderful idea. Avoid people. Take up gardening. Stay in your house. Stay in your yard. Have people leave things at the door. Um but outdoors is one of the best places to be uh, other than your house. It's safe. Uh, the sun readily kills the virus, which is good news. Very good news. I noticed yesterday I, I happened to live on, on a beach in, uh, on the Gulf Coast of Florida, and it didn't look like anybody got the message about, <laughs> about social distancing because the beach was real crowded yesterday, Dr. Senate. It was a beautiful day here in Florida. It's disappointing. Uh, percentage of the population don't believe that uh, this epidemic is coming. Uh, I assure you it is coming, and it will probably affect about 50% of the United States. And that's those are the kind of staggering numbers that have to kind of lull us out of complacency. And Dr. Senate, that's a very important thing you said, because and I'm getting some pushback, not not a lot, but but certainly not as much as we got a week or so ago. But the more we learn about this this virus, the more we learn about how contagious it is, and the more we realize that it may not just be the fact that you may have it, but or or people that you are with are are relatively healthy, but it's a it's it's the contact that you may come in with somebody who's elderly, somebody who's vulnerable, somebody with diabetes, somebody whose immune system is compromised. So. Uh, you're, just to be clear and to reiterate, when people are saying to me, hey, Mike, should I should I make every effort to just stay away from people and stay home, from your professional perspective, that is absolutely um, advisable. Yes. Avoid movie theaters, bowling alleys, any sporting event. Most of them are canceled now anyway. Right. But you don't want to go where crowds go. My wife was very upset with me Sunday that I refused to go to church. Um, these are any gathering of people is dangerous because most people are infectious before they get sick. So they don't know they're infected. They're shedding the virus. 
uh, and they're innocently going about their life, but they're infecting other people. Right. Dr. Sennett, how long do you think this, this period of time realistically is going to last in the United States with the advising of, of social distancing, staying home? Are we looking at weeks? Are we looking at months? In, in, I know it's very hard to, to peer into a crystal ball here, but based on your years of experience and expertise, how long is this period of time going to last? If we could get everyone to socially isolate, uh, there's ample data that that truly blunts the epidemic. Uh, a great example from the great flu, the Spanish flu, of 1918, right. um, the mayor of Philadelphia allowed a parade of 200,000 people to occur, whereas the mayor of Boston made everyone stay home. Philadelphia had a horrible outbreak. Boston had a very muted outbreak with far fewer deaths. So social isolation is what we have to offer now. Additionally, in general, vitamin D reduces your risk of acquiring any respiratory virus. Um, and finally, people should make sure they uh, take, if they have a medical condition, they should take their medicine exactly as it's prescribed and because there's a possibility of supply ch chain shortages, they should probably go see if they can get extra to keep in their house. Now, how long will this go? If everyone socially isolates perfectly, it might be over in six to eight months. If they don't, it could be a year or even 18 months. My goodness, my goodness. So this is not this is not going to be days or weeks. This is going to be a, a, a months long event, at minimum. Yes, um, yes. America is a huge country, uh, and many health departments. There's not a uniform set of rules for them. Each state makes their own. So some are more strict than others. So I praise the person in Kentucky that took this in hand and stopped the person, but I'm not sure that's occurring in all parts of the country. 800-655-MIKE. Lisa, you're on the Mike Gallagher Show with Dr. John Sennett, Chairman of Internal Medicine, University of South Florida. Hi, Lisa. Go ahead with your question. Hi. Um, my husband is age 59, has chronic sinus infections and Lyme's disease. Could this affect him more than the average person? It might. Uh, with Lyme disease, especially if he's home and not working and not in good physical condition, which often happens with Lyme disease, you have enough energy to exercise, you don't have the same lung capacity, you don't have the same cardiac output, so that would make him, if he got infected, at greater risk. So I would take your husband, and husbands tend to be stubborn because I am one, <laughs> and make him self-isolate, get away from people. Here's the TV. Here's a bunch of DVDs you always wanted. Go shopping on Amazon. Read Whatever a book. You want. Read a book. <laughs> yeah. Don't go outside. Right. Uh, now, I, I'm, I, you know, I want to ask you about the pushback that some Americans are, are exhibiting right now. For example, here's a text message from South Carolina. This is all a bunch of BS. Everyone's freaking out. There are more people killed by the flu than anything else. How do you how do you respond to, to something like that, Dr. Sennett? Um, well, the data, the global data tells us this is not the case. This virus is 10 to 20 times as lethal as influenza. If you think... Uh, January 3rd, when we started hearing about this, three a little bit over three months ago, we now have 170,000 cases worldwide, okay? It's a very indolent, a very slow disease. So we have about 6,500 deaths, 
but only 77,000 have completely recovered. Right. It's a month-long illness. 16 minutes before the hour, we're going to continue with Dr. John Sennett. Uh, another segment to go, and again, three ways for you to, to reach Dr. Sennett. You could text message your comments to 1-800-655-MIKE, 800-655-6453. You could email your com- your questions for him to mike at mikeonline.com, mike at mikeonline.com, or you could call us, 800-655-MIKE. 800-655-6453. Portions of our show here in the relieffactor.com studios brought to you by Fellowship Home Loans. Call 800-510-MIKE or fellowshiphomeloans.com. Fellowship Home Loans, welcome home. Again, Connecticut, New Jersey, New York governors reaching a deal on rules ordering all restaurants to close 8 p.m. tonight. A lot of cities and states are following suit. We're kind of we're kind of witnessing um, a gradual shutdown of America, and we're getting you all the clarity and information we can here on The Mike Gallagher Show. You. <laughs> <laughs> 